in this section, we are going to look at an important uh, concept in Selenium, right? Which is synchronization and different weight types which are available in WebDriver. Now, if you're working on Selenium automation with a web, uh, web application, you will come across uh, these issues on a regular basis, like um, element not found exception, so uh, element was not clickable. So these kind of exceptions uh, the web driver will throw, right? Now, these mostly happen due to a lack of synchronization, right? What it means is your web application and your Selenium script are not in sync, right? So uh, your application may be moving or uh, loading up too slow and your script may be moving ahead because there are no weight conditions applied on the elements, right? So your basically your uh, script is going ahead, but your application is not. So it is not able to uh, find those elements because the application is probably on a different page, right? Or a, or a different section. So that's the problem which we face. And to uh, resolve that, Selenium provides different types of weights, right? Uh, and we are going to look at it one by one. So these are the different kinds of weight uh, mechanisms which you can follow uh, when you face these kind of issues in your application. First, let's uh, look at implicit weight and explicit weight. Now, implicit weight can be applied on all the elements which are present on the page, right? So it will wait for a certain duration until all the elements are loaded on the page when you use implicit weight. So you can define a weight time period and it's not a static weight. That means it will not uh, consistently wait for that amount of time. Once it finds that it is able to find, it, it is able to load all the elements on the page, it will, the script will move irrespective of whether the timeout is completed or not, right? So it's not a static weight. Similarly, on similar lines, explicit weight, it is applicable for a single element. So uh, when one of your elements is taking longer time to load compared to other elements on the page, then you should put a explicit weight on that element. You need to define some expected conditions and the web driver is going to wait for that amount of time until that expected conditions is met, right? So that's explicit weight. Now, before moving forward, let's have a look at the difference between these two because uh, mostly people get confused between implicit weight and explicit weight and when to use, uh, when to use, in which scenario to, uh, you can use implicit and in which scenario you should use explicit. Now, as I said earlier, uh, implicit weight, it waits for all the elements on the page to get loaded and explicit is for a specific element on the page, right? In implicit weight, expected conditions are not required, but in explicit, you need to specify an expected conditions, right? For the element on which you are putting this explicit weight. Now, implicit weight uh, you should use in scenarios where your elements can be located within the specified time frame, right? It should not be more or uh, it should not be more than that time frame. Otherwise, it, it won't work. Uh, in case of explicit, so if a particular element is taking a longer time to load, then you should use explicit weight, right? So that's the basic difference between implicit and explicit. Now let's see it in a real action. How do you use them, right? So coming back to our project, which have, we have been using for this course, right? Uh, and our banking demo application. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use implicit weight on the on the login page, right? I'm going to check whether all these elements are loaded before it moves to any other page, right? Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on this sign up link. And here, when it comes to this page, I'm going to uh, wait for a specific element to be loaded. Uh, in, for this example, I will use first name, right? I will wait for this text box to be loaded and I will put the expected conditions for this text box. Now, this is only for demo purpose. So I'm not um, actually using a real scenario where this first name is taking more time to load because in this particular application, it, all the elements are loaded immediately. But 
um, with your real applications, it may not be the same case, right? So there may be some Ajax script, which is uh, currently loading your elements, or it is applicable to a certain el certain uh, certain element, which is not getting loaded properly. So in those cases, you can use explicit wait, and it will wait for that particular element to be loaded before uh, it moves on with your script, right? So uh, once I have loaded the application, I'm going to put implicit wait, right? So all the weights basically are inside this manage, right? Driver dot manage. Once you uh, click on dot, you will get timeouts. Under the timeouts, you will find all the three methods implicit wait uh, set script timeout and page load timeout so we are going to see the remaining two but this time we'll be using the implicitly wait right so here you need to pass a value for your time i mean what amount of time you want to wait and then what unit right it could be seconds minutes or hours generally we use seconds but depending on your application you can change uh, both the time and the time unit right now coming to explicit wait, we need to use the web driver wait class and we need to initialize the driver instance inside this. So you need to do new web driver wait and then pass the driver and put a timeout here, right? Similar to implicit. Then here you can use that wait to put unexpected conditions, right? So you can see there are lots of methods in exp expected conditions. So I'm going to use presence of element located. So that means it will wait for that particular element to be present on that page, right? So I'm going to use XPath or maybe ID, right? And uh, that ID is, I think, first name, but we'll verify that before using it. So this is our element and we have got a name and a ID. So I'm going to use ID here. And before that, I need to click on that particular link, right? So by.xpath and dot click, right? So let's go back to that page so that we can grab that particular element locator, right? For the sign up. Uh, so this is the text we can use. Oh, I'm going to use a tag with that text to identify that particular element, right? So this is my text, close it and this should do it, right? So let's quickly verify this. Now, yeah, I want to, once I do a wait, right? So I want to perform some operation on this element. So you can directly put here, uh, send keys, and I will put here, do a script, right? So let's now verify this. So once it loads the page, it will implicitly wait for 30 seconds, right? To load all the elements. Once it is done, it will click on that sign up link and it will go to the next page. Now there it will wait for the first name to be present, right? And after that only it will perform that operation, send keys. So this way you can synchronize your application with your script, Selenium script, right? Now moving on to the uh, next weight, which is the fluent weight. So fluent weight um, is an kind of advanced kind of weight where there are lots of other options. It is very similar to explicit weight, right? It explicitly wait for a condition as well as the frequency with which it needs to check the condition, right? So it's does, it works like um, polling, 
like a polling job, right? It polls every five seconds or whatever time you have given in a certain frequency, it will poll for that element on the page, whether it is present or not before giving any exception. So that's the speciality of fluent weight, right? So it's pretty dynamic. Um, and in cases where, where you face issues with a, a particular element where it is dynamically getting loaded. That means it takes different amount of time to get loaded. Sometimes it may take 10 seconds, sometimes it may take 20 seconds, right? So you are not sure uh, what amount of time that element will take. So if you put implicit or explicit weight, uh, and if that timeout is more than what you have put in, in that, it will fail, right? So it's better to use fluent weight and put a specific time and then uh, do polling every five seconds or 10 seconds until you find that element, right? So um, let's see this in action now. Um, I'm going to use uh, the same element for this, right? For this example. So let's do this instead of explicit, we'll use fluent weight, right? Uh, pretty similar, but uh, the way of uh, defining this is a little bit different. So we'll use the web driver and we will initialize this with a new fluent weight, right? Now here we will be passing the driver, right? Um, okay. Then after this, we can put use all these methods, right? So we'll use the with timeout. So here we'll put a duration in seconds, right? And then we can use um, polling as I was explaining. So here also it accepts duration. So that you'll put again third or not 30, actually five seconds. Every five seconds, I want to check whether that element is present or not. Now, another interesting thing which uh, fluent weight provides is ignoring a particular exception, right? So I can ignore like a no such element exception until a particular timeout and this condition, right? So until that, it will ignore this exception, it will not throw this exception, right? So that's pretty useful. Then uh, we need to now apply that weight on a element, right? On our element. So this is our element and we'll be using that weight dot until here we'll be defining a new function for web driver web element, right? It will basically override this apply method and we'll return our element here. So driver dot find element and by dot ID, uh, what we have used first name, right? So first name. So that's it, right? Now that we have got our element, we'll perform some action on it. So QA script, right? Similar thing, what we did earlier. So this is the whole of kind of definition of fluent weight, how you define it uh, for your element. It's a little bit um, difficult to remember, but once you start using it, it won't be such a problem, right? So let's quickly check this out. It's going to perform the same operation basically, but this time we are using fluent weight instead of explicit weight. So you really need to decide uh, which one of the weight mechanisms you want to use depending on the scenario and uh, the problem, the issue which you are facing on your different elements, right? So depending on that, you should decide what you want to do. Okay. So this is done. And now we are going to look at um, the other exceptions or the other weight, weight times, right? So, 
apart from these there are two timeout methods which are available uh, in selenium wait which is set script timeout and set page load timeout right now these are not um, these are very simple to understand like set script timeout will it will set an amount of time to wait for an as uh, a synchronous script to finish so if there is any script which is running on your page or on your element it will wait till that script is over or finished right before throwing in particular error like a element not found exception right so it will wait for the script to finish then page load timeout so this also it sets the amount of time for the page to load completely load right before throwing any error now if you want to see the syntax it's pretty simple again so you can use driver dot manage dot timeouts dot page load timeout and you you need to provide this so it's pretty similar to implicit wait it's just uh, different methods which uh, selenium provides right so you can use set script timeout and then again it is same right so these are the two methods two timeout methods which are available which you can use page load timeout and script timeout now uh, the final method right the final method is thread dot sleep now this is pretty rarely used and it's not advisable at all to use thread dot sleep right only in um, if you are not able to find any other way of resolving a particular issue you should uh, take this up as as the last resort not the first option right so that's why i have kept it in the last i would highly recommend not to use this except uh, in pretty bad scenarios right where you don't have any other option left why we don't want to use it because it always forces the browser to wait for that particular time so it's a it applies a static wait on the browser right so if you have given one minute for your script to wait it will always wait even if you, all the elements are loaded and your uh, application is synchronized still it is going to wait because that thread in which the driver is running will go to sleep for that amount of time so nothing will happen on that particular thread right now if you use it it uh, frequently in your scripts your execution time is going to go up like anything so it's highly um, advisable to not use thread dot sleep rather use any of these uh, five methods which are available in selenium wait right implicit explicit uh, fluent wait set script timeout and page load timeout so that's it uh, i wanted to show you on synchronization and wait types in the next sessions we have, will look at how you can handle different frames in selenium um, and some other methods right